All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to round 15's edition of Just The Tips. I'm joined once again by Druzy. How are you? Very good, thank you, Jesse. What about yourself? I am medium rare. Thank you, Druzy. It's good to be back on a full episode of Just The Tips, even though, you know, the, <laughs> the durations actually got longer when we had buy rounds. But either way, we've got nine games to talk about this week, which yeah. is a welcome change. I'm bloody excited for nine games to be mm. back. You don't have to watch stinking games. You can skip the stinkers and watch the good ones. It was good to have an insight into the teams that are wouldn't usually watch like Port Adelaide versus Gold Coast wouldn't have mm. usually watched that game we actually had a very successful round of tipping this week Drizzy for the first time we got <laughs> all of our tips right I did dabble I changed to Hawthorne and then I changed back to Essendon in I messaged you on Sunday morning oh, you're such a fucking smug freak so with that in mind uh, you've moved up to 36 with 83 correct tips I am 10 behind you still feeling the pain of last week where I got one uh, did you get two last week? You didn't, oh, two. Yeah. yeah, so I'm on 73, 422nd, just trying to get into that top half, um, so I'm still a fair way off the pace. And Dad has moved up into the top 130 with 80 overall, so that just sucks. I reckon Kim will overtake me at some point in the season. Really? I just have a stinky feeling that he'll, he'll catch me. Yeah, he's right in the rear view mirror. In fact, he's kind of in your blind spot now. You're actually mm. not sure whether you can turn change lanes. He's yeah. just right there, yeah. All right, so for the weekly winners, this one's a little bit hairy this week, Drewzy, because seven people tied for five correct tips and zero margin. They nailed it. So I can't put them on the screen, but I will read them out to you right now. Congratulations to Ash Go Boom 2, Rio Gun, HJ Mac, Max0217, Ashton DG, oh, Riley C, Ashton. Tash Agnostu, Agnostu, sorry. You Ash threw me off by interrupting. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, Ashton's been a, a long-time subscriber of the Druzy channel, so it's oh, good to see a plonker get on the score sheet. Good on you, Ash. But in exciting news, we do have a new overall leader with Ben Martin with 87 correct tips, four ahead of you, Drews, uh, with a cumulative margin of 391. First time leading the comp as well. So, congrats. We'll see how long you can hold on. And surprise, surprise, the fantasy leader remains the same with James England on 1983 uh, as his average, which is really good. Before we get into the tips, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by our sponsors, Manscaped. If you want an elite looking groomed chest and nutsack, make sure you go to manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, you get 20% off and you get free shipping on their elite products. So do go check that out. And yeah, clean shaven balls, that's the whole point. Mm. Drewzy's pubic hair is actually yet to come in yet, so he doesn't need this, but if you guys need it, go for it. <laughs> the first game of the round on the Thursday night is Brisbane taking on Geelong at the Gabba. This will be an exciting contest. It's the rematch of the prelim, of course. Unfortunately, on a Thursday night, so I don't, I'll be at work, so yeah. that, that stinks. Not Deserves a Friday night slot. But uh, Lions obviously beat North well without Zorko, but they were kind of challenged, and uh, North put up a good fight, and they just sort of got over the line, as Brisbane so often do. Lions was good. He had 36 touches and 12 tackles. For the Cats, obviously, we saw on Friday night, they beat the, the Dogs after the siren in dramatic circumstances. Yeah. Do you, do you and the cats got out of uh, you know second or third gear. Mm? Yeah, yeah, I think they probably did. I don't know if they fourth. I don't think we've seen them. Their top form. I think their, their top form was probably like Richmond, like the, when yeah. they beat Richmond by yep. eleven goals. But I was actually quite impressed with the dogs. I think good to go there and do what they did at GMHBO and were very unlucky not to win. Um, yeah, that was an outstanding game. So Stewart was obviously BOG as we said. Uh, Smith had thirty and set up the game winner with that really really good kick to Ryan, which hasn't really gotten mentioned that much. Both teams have been great over the last five. Uh, between the two, I think there's only one loss to Melbourne. That was the Lions. Yeah. The Lions probably need to win this to stay in the hunt for top two. Can they do it? They beat Richmond at home. That was a big statement win. And if, if you're just looking at the top sides, they, they narrowly lost to Melbourne a few weeks back as well. Geelong in that game against the Bulldogs. It was a very gritty performance. Geelong like playing almost slow, like contested mm. football. So... This is a very very tight game, a genuine clash of the Titans. Can Brisbane win? Obviously, it's a prelim rematch as well, which Geelong got over the line at, at the Gabba. Mm. So going on that, I think I'm going to have to tip Geelong. Really? I think. I think. But this is a this is as 50-50 as it gets. I don't want to... Just going back, I don't want to sound like a disrespect to the Bulldogs by saying that Cats didn't get out of second or third gear. I think it was more referring to the fact that every time the Dogs like got a goal, as you would remark, you just had faith that Geelong mm -hmm. would respond, which shows that they maybe had a little bit left in the tank. On that basis, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough <laughs> game. It's Geelong the... have an extra day break, if, yeah. if that plays any factor into your Yeah. I, I think I might go Geelong, but mm. I could see this one changing. Yeah. I'll, I'll say Geelong win this by 12 points. I'll go 
22 points. Second game of the round is Richmond hosting St. Kilda at the MCG, or at least what we assume is the MCG now. We're just going to assume that we're in Melbourne until we hear otherwise. But uh, both of these teams coming off the bye. Both of these teams coming off the bye. Richmond's post-bye game was a defeat to West Coast in dramatic sec circumstances. Game they'll probably feel like they should have won. The game was almost sewn up. Similarly, St. Kilda were six goals up against Adelaide in Cairns. Inexplicably lost the game. Riley Tillthorpe with an amazing goal over his head to break St. Kilda hearts. And it's, yeah, you think, is that the low point of the season for St. Kilda? And you think, no. <laughs> There's been like five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a pile of shit. The Tigers are seven and six. This would be easily their worst start to a season since they started winning all these flags. We know they, they start seasons averagely and then have an amazing back half of the season. And that's why sort of dropping one to West Coast, it's like a little bit unexpected. They generally only lose one or two in the second half of the year. So can't really afford to lose too many more, if any. So again, like this is the time that they're probably going to really click into gear. Last time they met early in the season, Richmond won by 86 points. Could we see a similar result? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> St. Kilda coming off one of the worst results of the season, as you've just said. And Richmond, although they lost to West Coast, I rate West Coast highly. And Richmond is going to fucking absolutely clap St. Kilda this week by 46 points. Mm, yeah, I agree similarly. Um, they were, I thought Richmond were good against Essendon. Mm -hmm. um, they sort of just coasted and won the game by 40 points. Um, and against West Coast, they controlled... and. I, they say they were better for longer and then just couldn't match them in the last five yeah. minutes. So I think they're going to turn up to play and I think St. Kilda is going to get their cheeks clapped by 52 points. Ooh. The third game of the round is potentially one of the least mouth-watering clashes you've ever heard of. You've got North Melbourne hosting Gold Coast at <laughs> Blunston Arena. What a great advertisement for our game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, North are actually having a little bit of an upturn in form. They challenged Brisbane, they drew with uh, GWS, and then it wasn't so long ago they beat Hawthorne. And generally, they're just looking a little bit stronger than, mm -hmm. you know, obviously how they started the year. Defence held up pretty well for last week, uh, at least for three quarters. And, then, you know, most teams lose to Brisbane, so it's no real shame to them. The Suns, uh, we kind of blasted them on the Drew Footy Show on Drew's channel because they were clapped by Port. And other than your, your typical performers like Took Miller, um, Noah the, Anderson, Luke yeah, Koshin, Noah Anderson, that's, Greenwood. Yeah, uh, other than like a hand handful there's just not a lot of even contribution from them and it was a performance of a tired team that really really needs a break even though i think they just had a bye didn't they yeah ben king uh having a bit of a downturn in form understandable for a young kid but uh i think he was goalless against freeman and then only two goals from three possessions um against port adelaide so they just probably need a bit of rejuvenation at the moment this is an opportunity for them to get a win earlier this year the suns beat north melbourne by 69 points i feel it's likely going to be a different result Sexy. this time how do you see this going I, I've tipped North Melbourne mm. um, just because it's in, in Tassie and they're just playing um, four quarters almost. They're, they're playing hard and that's something that you can't really say about Gold Coast at the moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip North Melbourne to win this one. I just really haven't been impressed by Gold Coast, especially after that last week performance against Port Adelaide. North will fancy their chances here to get a win. They played GWS very well here uh, a couple of weeks back, and yeah, I just see them getting the getting the chocolates in this one, North Melbourne. So for one of the first times this season, I'll tip North Melbourne to win this one by 19 points. Yeah, sometimes when a crappy team has a bit of a sniff and think they can win, they lift a gear, and that may happen with Gold Coast. They should fancy themselves to win this. But the form line of North and contrasting with Gold Coast, it's too strong. I think Gold Coast are in a slump. North will win this in Tassie by... 17 points. Next game is one of the more interesting clashes of the round, and I'm actually not being facetious even though both of these teams are non-finalists so far. you got Collingwood hosting Fremantle at what is currently Marvel Stadium. I say it's interesting because Collingwood are obviously just coming off the back of beating Melbourne, um, something that's only happened once early this year, uh, again, when Adelaide beat them inexplicably as well, but uh, their, their form's lifted. They, they're looking good. Like, they lost the port by a point. Uh, they beat the Demons, obviously. Uh, they near, Well, they got within 10 points of Geelong, uh, and they beat yeah, Adelaide. Adelaide yeah. So, uh, things looking up and uh, obviously it's going to be a new coach and uh, I believe it's Robert Harvey taking over so it'll be interesting to see how after the buy, after the emotion of Buckley whether they lift for it so mm -hmm. that's probably the only question mark on Collingwood Fremantle on the other hand coming off the buy, and then well it was actually two buys in a row when Gold Coast came to visit you at Optus <laughs> Stadium a couple of weeks ago they're a team that has been travelling okay um, with a lot of injuries at the moment and that's made it hard uh, I think Alex Pierce back in was really good I think he dominated uh, Ben King when he came in which is a big plus uh, Griffin Logue's back in the team I believe yeah should be should be and Nat Fife is a question mark as well but I think he's a test for this week Sam Switkowski back in as well mm. when he's been in he's been really good for us how do you see this going as a Fremantle fan I just see the storyline of Collingwood getting rid of Buckley beating Melbourne getting a new coach and just firing up Collingwood we all know that, that you have all the talent there and if Robert Harvey can show up and get the best out of these players they're more talented than the Dockers players at the end of the day and uh, they, they could easily win this if, if it's at Marvel Freo have lost twice there already this season I, I think we're 
better this season than Collingwood. I think we've been better all year than Collingwood. But uh, we, we don't usually show up away. If we win this, I'd be fucking pretty stoked. I can see it happening, but I just have been let down too many times by Freo, and I don't really want to get my hopes up. I could definitely see Freo winning this because I know how well we can play, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip Collingwood. <laughs> I'll tip Collingwood to win this by 20 points. Yeah, it's the it's the form line and the sort of narrative around Collingwood that's compelling, and I think as well the the lack of fear of failure now, now mm. that they've got a new coach, a new mindset. It's like, yeah. let's see what we can get out of this season. Yeah, bad time to play Collingwood. I'll, I'll tip him in the 10 points, but I, equally I feel like Fremantle should be looking at this thinking we should win this, and if we're serious... We'll try and win this. We but should win this. We should win this, but um, yeah, I'll tip Collingwood, but I'm not that confident. Next up, we have Essendon versus Melbourne at the MCG, which uh, could actually be potentially quite a good game. Their yeah. form lines are sort of intercepting. Mm. Yeah, Essendon looking uh, obviously better over the last month. We talked a lot about them. They beat the Hawks last week to reclaim 10th spot. Stringer was unbelievable with four goals and 29 possessions. He's he's their X factor, really, along with McDonald tipping Woody. Um, that you know The midfield's firing with um, uh, Parrish and uh, Merritt. Even though McGrath out for a long period hurts, um, you know, they're, they're looking pretty good. And then to contrast that, Melbourne obviously been the best team all year and I haven't lost faith in that. But it's probably a good time to play them having just lost to Collingwood pre-buy. Um, maybe a little bit of confidence, maybe a little bit of momentum drop. Maybe they're tired as well. Because I think that's been, what it is. Yeah, they've been playing to a high standard and sometimes a buy isn't quite enough. It might it might be the start of a little slump here. So that might be their vulnerability. Mm-hmm. How much of a chance do Essendon have to beat the best team in the comp? I don't think they will. Uh, yeah, Essendon, have, as you said, you've said it all there, but Essendon have been playing well. But Melbourne at the MCG, I don't think any side in the comp plays the MCG better than Melbourne. So I reckon Melbourne will get back to their winning ways this week. They need to after a couple losses in recent times. I think they were tired, as you mentioned. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back in the Ds to respond after a loss to Collingwood. But Essendon are playing good footy at the moment. It's not going to be an easy win for them. And if they lose this, they'll have their backs against the wall. They've sort of just got like one shoulder. They're just mm. sort of like leaning on it at the moment mm. at Melbourne. Um, the so venue's at capacity. So they're just... I'll tip Melbourne to win this one by... I'll go 28 points. I respect Essendon's ability to win this game if Melbourne are in a slump. And mm-hmm. that's the question I don't know. Because generally... Slumps don't just last one game, mm-hmm. often. That's the vulnerability. That being said, Melbourne should win this game. Yeah, yeah so I'll tip again by, yeah, four goals. Yeah. Next up, we have Port Adelaide hosting Sydney at Adelaide Oval, and this could be a genuine, like, elimination final preview. This team, These teams are fifth and sixth on the ladder at the moment. Port Adelaide just clapped Gold Coast in a typical performance where they lose to the good teams, then clap the, <laughs> clap the bad <laughs> yeah. teams. Although we keep roasting them every time we, they beat a bad team. We're yeah. like, eh, still beating bad teams. <laughs> in a plus for them, Ollie Wines has been a monster, as we talked on the Drew Footy Show. A good chance to be up there um, in the Brownlow count at the end of the year and Connor Rosie kicked eight goals across the last two games so he's finding a bit of form which is good and then uh, is it uh, Butters and Dozma might be back in is it this I week? I saw or? that somewhere that they're, they're very close to returning whether it's this week or in the next couple of weeks the boys will be back soon. Yeah Butters in particular really important player for them so I'm excited to see him play if he is. The Swans were undone by Hawthorne uh, at home pre-buy which would be Easily their most disappointing result for mm-hmm. the year. 38 points is a very one-sided affair. Uh, they've been a little bit shaky, but not poor. And in the last five, they've only played six to eight bottom teams and only won three of the five. So mm-hmm. not compelling form, but also not terrible. So I feel like to win this game, we'd need to see a real shock performance that Sydney has produced a couple yeah. of times this year. Can they do it in this game? Nah. Nah. Sick. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you say the shock performances. They were delivering them in early in the season, but I think they've lost that. I think that their best run has been done. They're like a $3 favourite dog when you're putting on a punt, right? They've run very quick out of the gates, and you're like, yes, they're in here, and then they've just been overtaken slowly. They're out of the four. They're slowly maybe going to slip out of the eight eventually. But if Freo can beat Sydney at home, Port Adelaide, a much better side, can do it as well. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide in this one, Jesse. Good to see Rosie back in form because, yeah, when, he, when he's on, he's a very electrifying player. So it's good to see him back. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide to win this one by 33 points. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The form line of Port Adelaide, even though we criticise them for not beating you know, top teams, it's still com- more compelling than Sydney's for me. Mm-hmm. And, and to flip the criticism I just made of them, the fact that they, they don't often lose to teams worse than them is also kind of giving me a lot of confidence that they should beat them. So yeah. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide by, yeah, five goals. Mm-hmm. Next, we have GWS hosting Hawthorne at Giants Stadium. The Giants were too good for the Blues last week with a six-goal win. They, we were a little iffy about who to tip that one because we expected a response from Carlton. Didn't get it, but more about them later. Uh, so GWS kind of snapped back into form. Finn Lacen kicked five. It was a game they 
really needs Wynn to stay in touch with that top eight after dropping points against North Melbourne. Taranto, Hopper, and Cumming also good. Hawks, on the other hand, fought valiantly but came up short against the Dons. Uh, O'Meara and Mitchell and Impey all played pretty well, and uh, Kaczynski kicked three. He's actually putting together a really good season, mm. um, to be fair to him, for uh, like a 19, 20 year old key forward. Um, yeah, they'll be very happy with him, sort of filling a position they need. If the Giants can beat Carlton, surely they can dispose of a Hawthorne, but Hawthorne have. Two weeks ago, yeah. bobbed up and beat Sydney, so there is a chance, right? Or how yeah. do you see this going on? No, there definitely is a chance. Hawthorne are in good form. They're playing with good intensity. I say it every fucking time, and I can't stop myself, but it's a good <laughs> word to use. They're playing four quarters in the last few weeks, Hawthorne, and uh, they're going to they're gonna take it up to the Giants, I think. But the Giants have too much star power that's firing at the moment. I think I'll have to tip the Giants here, mm. to be fair. But I think I'll tip this for my upset of the week, because Hawthorne have been in form, obviously, as you said, beating Sydney, who are just about on par with the Giants so they're not going to be be afraid I'll tip the Giants to win this one though by 16 points I don't really think you could realistically back Hawthorne here I really mm. don't know why I said that all disjointed the, I do remember a game in 2019 where Hawthorne just collapsed them out of nowhere mm. in Canberra uh, when GWS made the grand final that year I wonder if we could see that again. I don't yeah. think so though I just think the Giants are playing for their season and Hawthorne don't really have that to worry about so yeah. Giants Which could play into Hawthorne's hands. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> could. It absolutely could. Nah, GWS too good. They'll win this game by five goals. All right. Penultimate game of the round is another juicy one. Potential finals preview. West Coast is hosting the Western Bulldogs at Optus Stadium on a Sunday afternoon time slot. Unfortunately, didn't get a better time slot than that. I think it's going to be a wet day as well, which doesn't favour us. But uh, the Eagles are coming off a miraculous win against Richmond um, pre-buy. Uh, in a game where they were dead and buried with seven minutes to go and then kicked four amazing goals and really lifted a gear to, that Richmond couldn't match. And as an Eagles fan, it was pleasing to see that we had that gear. I think that's the first time we've seen it this year. Yeah. Pleasingly, other than Kennedy turning back the clock, Luke Edwards bobbed up and probably could have won the Rising Star nod. I think Tilthorpe's done better over a longer period of time, so I understand why he got it. But he had 27 touches and could conceivably get a Brownlow vote, so that was unreal. Um, Shuey, Gov, Kelly and Shepard all due back in this week. So you could look at that two ways. Star power's back in or a couple of players maybe underdone. Who knows? For the Dogs, they were obviously heartbroken against the Cats GMHBA Stadium as we streamed. Bont uh, was huge and Liberatore as well almost dragged them over the line. And mm -hmm. They had their chances to win the game, obviously, but um, ultimately just couldn't close the Cats out in that final play. But it was a good performance at, um, at GMHBA where it's really tough to win. Norton also... Surely, I would say out. I don't know. Yeah. With a rib injury and getting subbed out immediately, be surprised if he makes it back. So that's an important avenue to goal lost. Can the Eagles take the momentum here for an upset? And I would class as an upset because the Dogs are clearly the better side. Yeah, I think the Dogs have been a better side this season. But I think the Eagles are on a, on a down downhill slope, as in they are gaining a lot of speed right okay. now. <laughs> that's, that's confusing. <laughs> confusing metaphor. They're going up, but they're on a downhill. <laughs> it's, 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 they're it's, on a downhill slope. The only way is up. No, I think they're starting to gain a lot of traction. I reckon West Coast are going to start to come into form in this second half of the season, and they're going to be a really hard team to beat. After that win against Richmond, we can see what levels they can lift to when required, and having Yo and Chewy in that midfield at the same time, and, and Tim Kelly, what was that stat about them not being in the same midfield over a certain amount of games? Yeah, so with Chewy, Kelly, and Yo, easily our best three midfielders, out of a 31 possible games, they've only played together eight times. I bet you if you checked, they would have won about seven or eight of them <laughs> yeah, as well. Uh, if you've done your fucking research. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one to tip, because a couple of weeks ago, I probably would have tipped the Bulldogs to come over here and get the job done, but... Um, beating Richmond will give them belief. Yeah, beating Richmond will be give them belief. And the Dockers were eight points behind at three quarter time against the Bulldogs at Optus, and the Eagles are on a lot better side than the Dockers, so the Eagles should get the job done against the Western Bulldogs by. I reckon you could beat them comfortably. I reckon mm. 23 points. I I'm going to tip West. Oh, I never get West Coast tips right, though. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. You talk. <laughs> <laughs> It's difficult for me to not tip with my heart here. I think uh, I know I'm a negative Eagles fan, but I reckon if you look back, I've more than often tipped us and we've lost rather than the other way around. So this is a tough game to tip. It is a tough game to tip. I think with the ins, I, I've said all year we're a midfielder short, and it's good to have all our mids in the back same game. The weather is an odd variable because I just don't rate us in the wet, and they have no Norton most likely. I'm going to back us in for a home performance that um, is consistent with how we normally play at home. I think we'll win by eight points in a thriller. Oh, wet. And I'm going to be streaming that definitely on my channel. Well, we've saved the best for last. The final game of the round is Carlton versus Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. Carlton really disappointing against the Giants uh, in Sydney. Um, and, and we talked about it again on the Drew Footy Show, but uh, we're waiting for the response for Carlton. 
didn't quite come against UWS, who are a better side. But just Carlton just can't really lift themselves to beat teams unexpectedly. They've won the games they're expected to. They've lost the games they're expected to. And there's a bit of a malaise and just like, I think the, the fans of their club are sort of like questioning the effort and the commitment mm-hmm. at the moment, um, which is not for me to say because I don't watch them that closely. But disappointing results and certainly the pressure's building up on Carlton. So they're going to really need to lift and get a result here against uh, a team that they should beat. We've said that for the last uh, few weeks. But yeah, definitely a winnable game for them. Like if they, if they lose this one, they are in all sorts. Yeah, I mean, to their credit, they've won the games that they're expected to for the most part. Of, uh, losing to Collingwood early in the year is the exception. But Adelaide... This is a game they should win. So if they lose this, then then I would say that's a new low (laughs) to some extent. (laughs) But that's not to disrespect Adelaide, who um, have put together some good form this year at times Mm -hmm. and been really compelling with the way they play with heart. And it's sort of exceeded the talent that seems to be on their list, uh, other than Tex Walker playing to an extreme standard. But obviously their last win was against St Kilda up in Cairns, and it's hard to say... Uh, obviously, that showed a lot of heart in that win, but then you also have to look at how bad are St Kilda to let a 36-zip on 54-18 to 18 lead slip as well. Um, Keys is, again, playing really well. Tilthorpe won the Rising Star nom last week. Two teams playing for pride, not really in the finals mix. Surely, this is the week we see some hunger. Who are you tipping? Yeah, you'd think so, but Adelaide are a very hard team to beat, they and are. Carlton don't like playing teams that are hard to beat because <laughs> they just give up. We talked about... Colton in depth on the Drew Footy show. They had one good quarter against GWS, but as soon as the game was out of reach, they sort of just gave up, which is something that Adelaide definitely do not do. We saw when they were really down against the Saints, they come back and won that against all the odds. Against Melbourne as well, they had a four-quarter effort. I don't think you could really say since maybe the first month of the season that Colton have played a four-quarter effort this Mm. season. Mm. This is a very tough one to tip. I'm interested to hear what you have to say before I make my tip. I'm going to tip Carlton. I'm going to tip Carlton because they. Mm. I wanted to tip them against GWS, but GWS is a better side. I don't think Adelaide's a clearly better side. I think they're on about par. They're at home. The result, the, it's got to come. I think it'll be this week. I think they'll win by seven points. Yeah. Oh. They haven't been so bad that I would expect them to lose at home to a team around their level or slightly lower. Yeah, no. Nah, if Colton can get out to a, a lead like the Saints did against Adelaide and then hold it, I reckon that, that should be enough. And I think Colton are capable if the best Colton side shows up. They have to respond, as you said. I'll tip Colton. I'll tip Colton to win by 18 points. All right, guys, that wraps up our tips. Like... Bailey Smith on a Saturday night. Let us know what you thought of our tips in the comments below. Let us know your tips for this round as well. Uh, subscribe to both our channels if you haven't already. Um, go follow Drewzy's uh, channel on the in the link in the description and you can keep up with the Drew Footy Show and all that business. Thanks. Go to manscaped.com, check out our sponsors, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Good day.